YouTube Battle Community, Brian Wilson fans, random people on the internet, my name is Giggins, and we're here today to talk about Brian Wilson's 2010 album, Brian Wilson Reimagines Gershwin, released on Disney Records August 17th of 2010. Um, I bought this album back when it came out, and I remember listening to it a handful of times, being kind of like, yeah, I get it, it's kind of fun to listen to, but I, I've never really gone back to it um, as much as I do with these other records. I've, I've played it over the last decade um, a bunch of times, but I never really stuck to it as much as I did with like That Lucky Old Son or No Peer Pressure or Getting Over My Head or any, any of that kind of stuff. So when it came time to think about what I wanted to review next, I was going through my CDs and I pulled this one out and I was like, you know what? It's been a while since I've heard this thing. Let me like really sit down with it and kind of digest it. And... I listened to it pretty late at night, and it made a huge difference with my appreciation of it. And I've come away from it really, really loving this album more than I thought I ever would have before. So, a little bit of backstory with this thing. Um, like I said, it came out in Walt Disney Records. Disney uh, approached Brian to do a Disney covers album, which he would do after this one. But at first he was like, can I do a Grishman thing? And they said, yeah, sure, let's do it. And because of that, the Grishman estate was super cool, and they let Brian have like full carte blanche over uh hundred over like a hundred songs that were unreleased from the Gersh Ira and George Gershwin estate um and so Brian went and finished a couple of songs and kind of reimagined a couple of them after listening to a bunch of tracks um there's a song called Will You Remember Me which became The Like and I Love You and Say My Say became Nothing But Love um they became, became very much a Brian Wilson track which is pretty awesome um, his collaborator at the time, Paul Von Mertens, helped arrange a lot of this stuff with Brian. Um, and Brian did produce it, but it was also mixed by Al Schmidt, the guy at Disney kind of put his little finishing touches on it. Um, it did come out on vinyl. Um, there was an iTunes bonus track of Let's Call the Whole Thing Off, which is pretty cool. And the whole thing was recorded with his classic band of the time. Um, and it's funny looking back on this thing because within two years of this coming out, Brian will be back on tour with the Beach Boys, something that none of us thought would ever happen. So um, this was kind of like the end of an era, if you will, before the next era began. But so, yeah, I really I'm really digging this thing again. So it opens up with it opens and closes with Rhapsody in Blue, which is just Brian multi-tracking his vocals, which sounds fantastic. I've always been a big fan of that. His um. His solo version of Midnight's Another Day, which came out well before That Lucky Old Son came out, is still like my favorite recording of that track, I think. I like them both, but that one, I think, because I heard it first, is kind of like stuck in my brain. But really enjoy Brian's vocal on this. The pleasant orchestration in the background adds a nice little touch. And you get a flavor of what you're going to kind of expect throughout most of this album. It's a mood album, if you want to put it that way. It's very much a mood record where like... You put it on and you play the whole thing. You just kind of mellow out to it. You kind of relax to it. It's not really... I can't drive and listen to this thing. <laughs> if I'm sitting around, I can play it and enjoy it. But The Like and I Love You is a wonderful song. It's it's Brian's arrangement of one of the Gershwin tracks. And I love it. It's comforting. It's sweet. And Brian sings so well on this one. But the little quirks here and there and the chord changes and timing... Um, adds a fun little dimension to it. It's just really well executed and well produced. So a great way to start the record off. Then there's a medley of four songs starting off with Summertime, a classic Summertime. I love the shaky guitar work. The brushes on the drums are nice. The little touches of piano here and there. It really makes for a fun listen. You can tell Brian's really feeling this one too. And the strings give off such a good dynamic, dynamic tension, if you will, to um, kind of balance out some of the, the light, the light, um, airiness. Is that the word I want? Airiness? It's just a light feeling with the way the instruments are being played, even though it's kind of a moody song. So I like the string work on that one. I Love You Porgy. This one's great, and this one for me is a Brian solo career vocal highlight. Um, he does a great job here. The way he, the way he is so articulate and so tender in his delivery, he's so confident, he just nails it. I really, really love that sweet, late night Brian Wilson jazz experience uh, that he delivers with this one. Just a wonderful vocal. So if you hear any a couple of songs from this album, make sure I Loves You Porgy is one of them. It's such a good vocal. Uh, I Got Plenty of Nothing is a really good instrumental track, kind of a lead-in to Ain't Necessarily So. 
Um, and the production here shines really well. I mean, the choruses are infectious and uh, it feels very Brian. The, the harmonica call and response, I'm digging that a lot too. Um, then we got, it's wonder, uh, wonderful, I should say rather. Nice Latin groove here, very 60s kind of lounge feel. And Brian's really articulate and calm throughout this one. Just a very relaxed, mellow kind of track. I mean, it's, it's upbeat, <coughs> excuse me. But in its upbeatness, it's not very like sprightly. It's just kind of like a happy, chill upbeat. Like if you're laying around and you're in kind of a good mood, you don't really want to do anything, but you're just feeling good. Like <laughs> it's kind of what it sounds like. Um, they can't take that away from me. Totally sounds like this car of mine, which I love. So that was very cool to get a, a Beach Boys feel with that one. And this song has some welcomed energy. I mean, there's a handful of songs in a row that are kind of on the lower end of chill. And this one gives some a shot in the arm to the album, big time. Um, the call and response is really well done. Um, you know, the, it's a welcomed energy, as I've said a couple of times already, but it's very much needed. Plus, everyone knows that song. It's a very catchy song, so love hearing them do that one. And then we got Love Is Here To Stay. Um, another moody piece. It's kind of soft. It's uh, more late night kind of jazz. I love the xylophone work. I think that's one of the, the highlights of this song for me is the xylophone, the vibes, if you will. Um, I've Got a Crush on You has that early 60s feel with that dancing piano and the vocal arrangement is straight out of the old school 50s doo-wop songbook. Um, it kind of slows down the pace a little bit after uh, they can't take that away from me. So we're, we got a couple in a row of some slower ones. Still a good song though. Uh, I Got Rhythm brings it back, thank you. Uh, almost smile-like intro with that uh, the orchestral kind of string work there. Before it goes full surf rock guitar and saxophone. Definitely sounds like 1963, 64. Very welcomed bolt of energy on this one as well. Brian really projects into this one and I love the key change at the end. What a good ending to this track. Um, classic Gershwin song, but hearing Brian's production of this and the key change really makes for an interesting listen. Someone to watch over me. Another smile era feeling with the beginning of this one. It's sweet, it's tender, and more of that late night kind of mood, but I love his delivery the bridge with this one. Great track. And then Nothing But Love, another uh, slightly original Brian Wilson track with the Gershwins here. Um, it's got that classic 60s vibe, but if it was done now. So it's very 60s inspired. Um, wonderful background vocals on this one. The, the sleigh bells and the tambourine add some really good sort of rhythm that propels it. Great enthusiasm on this track as well. And then it ends with another uh, Rhapsody in Blue reprise, which is a lot of fun because it's just like the opener. So you get kind of a bookend there, which I think is great. And the album cover was inspired by a 50s jazz album. I forget what it was. I'll have to look it up again, but it folds out. So you get like a whole, whole thing out of it. But here's the disc. And I'll show you the booklet here too. Booklet has the keyboards on the front and back as well. And I kept the sticker from the uh, original packaging here. I always keep the stickers. It says, the quintessential signature sound of Brian Wilson, co-founding member of the Beach Boys. Elegantly combined with the timeless classic melodies of the Gershwin Brothers, features 12 reimagined classics plus two new collaborations. Call this number to hear this album now. So I guess we could have called a phone number back in the day so you can hear the album. I, should, I wonder if I should give them a call. Let me kind of... It'd be kind of interesting to see if it still works. But the booklet has um, some information about the recording sessions and how it kind of came to be. And some, a couple of nice pictures of Brian hanging out. Love these pictures. It's really well done of him at the piano. Some information about the tracks. Another good shot of him at the, at the microphone there. This album for me, and I think for a lot of Beach Boys fans, um never really gets talked about. I really feel like this was this is kind of a sleeper in the Brian Wilson solo discography because it's not all originals, which I know a lot of people are kind of a stickler to hearing what Brian can do on his own with his own work. So to hear him take other people's songs and kind of do them in his own way, but it's also sounding kind of Gershwin-esque, Gershwin I should say. Um, I don't know how popular this is for a lot of Beach Boys fans. For me personally, I like it because you could tell Brian was having fun playing with the music. <coughs> Excuse me. What a review. Two coughs. 
playing with the music of his idols. I mean, his he grew up, I mean, Rhapsody in Blue was the first song he ever knew when he was like three years old. So to hear him make an album like this is heartwarming to know that he did something for himself that people would probably enjoy. Um, so that's why I kind of like it. My takeaway from it is that I'm happy he made it for him because it's kind of a, a coming, coming a full circle, really. I mean, that's the music he got into when he was a little kid. And here he is dedicating his work to the Gershwins by combining forces and having a collaborative moment here where his name and Gershwin are on the same track. It's pretty awesome. Um, I mean, this thing peaked at number 26 in the Billboard 200. It's pretty good. Um, it dropped down to number 53 in the second week, but it hit number one on the Amazon uh, jazz chart, which I think is pretty cool. So is it my favorite Brian Wilson album? No, definitely not. Is it really good? Yeah, it really is. And I really think you got to be in the mood for it. I think it's going to be at a certain time of night. I think for me, I just, I really got a, a late night jazzy vibe from it. And I'm really glad I kind of stumbled upon it and put it on. I think it was around midnight or one in the morning when I put it on. I'm really glad I did because it really hit me differently. It just kind of affected me way more powerfully than it has in the last decade that it's been out. So you never know. Music will always change. You will always change. What you didn't like, you might like, you know, etc. So glad I gave this thing another try. And uh, it's been a lot of fun revisiting it. So... Brian Wilson reimagines Gershwin. I'm going to give this thing like a 7 or 8 out of 10. It's really, really decent. My chances of going back to it, I don't think are very high uh, compared to everything else he's got out there. But I'm definitely going to play it, you know, every once in a while. So that's it. My name is Giggins. This has been Brian Wilson reimagines Gershwin. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.